All right, so hello and welcome to the 68th edition of The Verdict. I am Sprampray1000 and today we are going to be reviewing a recently released game. We are going to be talking about uh, Paper Mario Color Splash, which is the latest in the long line of Paper Mario games uh, for the Nintendo Wii U. Um, and for those of you who may or may not have been following with it, Paper Mario is sort of a spin-off series of Mario where everything is, as the name suggests, paper. Everything is, is very colorful. It's, it's hand-drawn. It's not like the 3D graphics you would normally come to expect. And so because of that, the art style is different. The very nature and presentation of the game is different. And um, that is one of the interesting things about Paper Mario is that it's so different from the standard presented Mario games. Um, for at least for me, this is more or less the first Paper Mario game I have ever played thoroughly and to completion. Um, and because of that, this is sort of an interesting thing for me. So let's just hop right into it with this one. Um, really, there's not too much to say in the story department. Uh, Mario and Princess Peach travel to Prisma Island, a place where color basically defines their way of life. And more or less, it kind of draws a lot of similarities to Super Mario Sunshine a bit, um, and in that regard, the story is pretty light, pretty simple. Princess Peach gets kidnapped not too soon into the game, and it's your job to team up with a paint can named Huey to restore paint and color to the land of Prisma, and more or less from there on out, the, the story diverges into six different acts. I mean, basically, each six stars that you need to find is more or less like an act in and of itself and then it leads into the final act um the story again as a mario game you would expect is not that in depth it's not that complex and it doesn't really deviate much from what you would expect just based on the name mario so for instance bowser's it bowser's in there the koopalings are in there you know you got your typical mario luigi toads etc the typical, you gotta save Princess Peach. It's just generic at this point. We know what it is. Although one thing I will say to the positive, to the massive positive of this game, is that the writing and the dialogue of this game, from the Toads to Princess Peach to Huey to just about anyone in the game, is sentient and self-aware. I think are the two ways I would describe it. And to that end, that makes this game probably one of the more fulfilling games I think I've played in a long time because the game understands that Mario is a long-running franchise there have been so many games and it, it not only references these different things it pays homage it has a lot of nostalgic parts it you know it really goes the extra mile to go back and say yeah if you're a longtime fan here you go you'll remember this you'll remember this one part where you know maybe you were a kid and you played a Mario game um, you know, that was really a long time ago, and maybe here's a, a recent reference, and that's kind of what I like to see in these uh, crossover slash, you know, homage-paying games, is when you have not only old-school references, but also recent references to other games. And I think that that's something that a lot of these types of games kind of mess up, is that they only pay homage basically back to the original, which is fine. I mean, I wouldn't expect anyone to really pay uh, go the extra mile, but that's why I really congratulate them here for it because it's, it's something definitely different and definitely unique And I really like that about this game So the story while it is on the surface a generic Mario story the dialogue is definitely a major plus in this game It's 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 really refreshing If you're a longtime fan of Mario or even a, a short time fan It is definitely something that you'll probably get a few laughs out of a few uh, nods and winks here or there to some things from the past and uh, I really think that that's what's really cool about this game. So now, graphics-wise, this game is not like that ridiculously graphically intensive or wowing. But what I will say is that the animations, the uh, poses, the the way the different paper, uh, the the way that all the different characters are animated on the paper, because every character is essentially two D, um, and really in that regard it, it gives a unique taste and twist on both new and old enemies I think that that's the probably my favorite part so when in, in combat in this game what happens is that as you fight enemies 
and hit them with moves, they begin to lose color, and that basically represents their health bar. Um, how much health they have left is there is you know how much color they have remaining on their body until they're completely white and they uh, are, are defeated. Um, I really like how they do a good job of scrubbing the color off. I like the way that the enemies look. I like the way that they have animations. And it really just gives a nice good feeling to see all that stuff come into play. I like how the uh, areas are basically cardboard. It looks like kind of, I want to say like Yoshi's Island type of uh, cardboard cutouts and stuff like that. I like the way that the areas are designed in terms of how they look. I think there's a good diversity of areas. And I really think that the graphics do help out with that. Again, not so much like super realistic detail, but rather just the way that they animate the paper and the way that they really bring it to life, in my opinion, is probably one of the best parts about it. Is probably what makes the graphics and detail or uh, the attention to detail really, really good in this game. So graphic wise, usually I, I kind of just say nothing about graphics, kind of just, you know, give it a slap and just say whatever it is what it is. I will give this game some credit for that because it really did help bring the idea and the implementation of Paper Mario to its fullest and that really is what matters in my opinion. Um, the soundtrack of this game is probably my favorite part about it. The soundtrack is really well done. There are songs in here from old school Mario games, there's new songs in here, each song feels like it was handpicked to be really really well sculpted and unique. So there really isn't much of a generic track in this game. A lot of times I, I really kind of had to hold back the urge to hum along with some of the older Mario tracks, which I really enjoyed. Um, there definitely, there's a lot of levels in this game that I think have really memorable uh, soundtracks and a lot of fight themes that I think are really, really memorable. Um, you know, for instance, I, I quoted, or I didn't quote, I constantly praised the Fortune Island uh, music. I'd say that the Shy Bandit theme was really good. Uh, the Juggling Bros, um, the circus performer theme was really, really good. It, it was really just hit struck a chord with me. Uh, the 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 shy guy that played the uh, sombrero uh, that played the sombrero the the sombrero wearing shy guy that played the uh, guitar was also really cool. Um, just so many good themes in my opinion from this, and that's really what I think counts a lot for this soundtrack. So out of all the games I think I've played this year and last year, because I know I haven't reviewed the main games this year, I'd have to say that Paper Mario has probably one of the best soundtracks I've seen in or seen heard in a game. So in that regard, I give it the gold spray and pray star right there for good, amazing soundtrack because that really blew me away. And again, it helped with the presentation in a way that I feel just having really good graphics would never be able to do. It helped with the feel of the game and that's really what I, I expect from a game like this now let's get into the part of the game that kind of divided me a bit the kind of bit that was really really meh the gameplay now I'll start off by saying this the gameplay is overall good it's overall functional and it works from start to finish it evolves throughout the game by giving you new cards and I think that that in and of itself is a really, really good thing to see and have done. However, let's get into this. The gameplay of this game is basically turn-based, where each at the start of every turn, Mario moves first. He picks his cards, basically using the gamepad. You pick your cards. You can color in your cards if they're blank cards in order to uh, increase their effects. Some cards are already colored in, which saves you having to use the paint and from there you play them and then it switches to more of an active time kind of battle system where you don't just play the cards and watch stuff happen you play the cards and you have to press a button or excuse me the a button in correspondence with the moves as they come out on the screen you can also tap the touchpad but i think the a button works a little better um and because of that the combat is is basically kind of like mario and luigi um, if anyone here has ever played that, again, I kind of think that that's intentional. Um, and in that regard, that really kind of keeps the combat, uh, I don't want to say innovative so much as I want to say involving. Um, it really makes sure that you never really get too comfortable because you want to maximize your cards because you can only hold a limit to them. Um, there's a variety of cards. Each one does something different. For example, there are jump, hammer, and uh, fire or, or flower cards. There's also cards like Pow Block, Tail, 
uh, frog suit, a whole bunch of different cards that come into play from previous Mario uh, games and iterations. Your typical jump cards allow you to jump on the enemy, although some enemies resist that. Hammer cards allow you to hammer enemies, um, but again, you know, some enemies are weak to it, some are resistant to it, um, and that's really interesting. Uh, and so on and so forth about flower, etc. And you can hold up to 99 cards, which I think is a decent amount. However, what I do think that this game should allow you to do is to stockpile extra cards, a la Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, that are not currently in your deck. I also think that one other criticism of the card-based system is that when you use too many cards in this game, you should be refunded the cards in the paint that you spent. Uh, let's say you, you, you play three cards and you paint them, and you only need one to end the fight. I think that you should be refunded the two cards and the paint for those cards that did not uh, were not used. I think that that really should also be included. Um, I also think that the... Uh, card system in this game cards should be given a little more frequently I feel to compensate for the fact that yeah you know you're trying to save your big cards for the end for the boss or for whatever you know could come up that's really dangerous because a lot of times what happens in this game and we're gonna get into something else that also kind of contributes to this is that a lot, when you play this game and you don't know what's coming a lot of times you will just be screwed because you were unprepared for the combat you don't know exactly what you need to do to beat the boss um, and because of that, you're basically at a disadvantage that you can't really come back from until you get a game over. And while I am a fan of trial and error in video games and, you know, uh, messing up until you get stuff right, I feel that the way that it's implemented in Paper Mario Color Splash kind of lends itself more to a unforgiving sort of difficulty curve where you just have to unfortunately lose based on you know, how your deck might be set up, you don't know what's coming up, and ultimately I think that that's kind of a problem with this game, especially since that cards don't come back to you when you use them, they are consumed. So what could happen is you could use up all the cards you need for a certain phase that you don't know coming up, and once you get to that phase, you can't attack. And that's actually what happened to me during the final boss, is I was on the final part of the final boss, and I ran out of cards that were effective against the boss, and the only other cards I have were countered by the boss's natural immunity to jump. And that's one thing I kind of don't like about some of these games. You can go in with a diverse deck, and by the time you get to the, the lethal part of the area, and sometimes you can't backtrack out of these areas um, without essentially losing, you basically have to fight uh, at a complete disadvantage, not, not only in the sense that it's a boss fight, but also in the sense that the game kind of screws you and locks you into it. And that kind of is what I don't like about a lot of games. I think that that's kind of unfair. I think that the way they could have implemented it a bit better was to drop the price of some cards to make them uh, more accessible. Because money in this game, while it, it does accrue naturally during the first, I want to say, two-thirds of the game to a sizable amount, by the time you get to the end of the game and you need specific cards to win, you actually will run out of money, I feel. I feel that they don't balance it too well and that could be done a bit better. Um, additionally, this game uses something called the Thing System. So throughout the throughout the exploration in the overworld and boss fights, um, there are these items that are in, rendered in 3D uh, called Things. And basically what happens is, is when you find them, you can squeeze them and they get added to your deck as a card. And then later on in the overworld, you can either play them in the background using something called Cutout, which allows you to either platform to other parts of the area using uh, 2D platforming, or you can play these thing cards in combat for effects. And a lot of times bosses in this game, in fact, I would go as far as to say as most bosses in this game, um, typically require you to use at least one thing to win. You cannot win fights in this game without at least one to two to three different things that you need to have. And while the game does provide you with the knowledge of how to get it, which is at, you know very good in most cases, although sometimes the game does not tell you where to find these things and basically tells you to go explore until you do, um, I feel like the system could be made a bit better. I feel that thing cards could be 
essentially key items, like in, like in again, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memory, similar to the enemy cards, I think that they could be key items that maybe can only be played once a fight, but you don't have to go back to the area and re-squeeze it or buy it for an incredible price in the, in the main city. I feel that they should just be there in your inventory once you find them for good. And I kind of stand by that because that's kind of obnoxious the way that they more or less force you to backtrack constantly through this game just to get one item and then leave. And it's interesting, it's also annoying, but I do like the thing system. I think it adds something to the game. I think it allows for a mixing up of boss combat, because typically most bosses in, in RPG-based games are either high mechanics, you know, like cutscene bosses or something, or they are damage dumps. And this game, I think, has something right. It, it allows for mechanics, but it all, and by that same token, it does not allow for damage dumps. You really cannot beat some of these bosses without things, because they will otherwise insta-kill you and prevent you from doing so. And that is kind of annoying, I feel. I did not, was a, I was not a fan of that during the campaign, or the, or, well, during the game itself. Um, that being said, I do want to take a moment back to, to really praise the way they kind of mix together the combat and the platforming aspect of this game. So like a Mario game, this game has platforming. Um, it has uh, platforming and combat. Um, I want to say that the platforming aspect of this game is not really so forgotten. It's really an important part of the game to be able to platform like you would in a traditional Mario game. You uh, can find cards. There's different spots on the map that you need to paint in using paint for completion. And the rewards for doing all this is extra, uh, extra artwork uh, pieces, extra sound checks. Um, you can play the music in game and that's really cool I think if there's a favorite level of yours and you work really hard at it you can get the music for it. I think that that's really good. And I like that they put that in. They have a museum where you can see every card in the game. I think that that's really cool. Um, I think that that whole museum where you can do all of that is really just a nice touch for the people that like the game. They, the developers intentionally put that in to really show off and, and you know make you feel uh, like it's worth it. And if you really like the game, to reward you for it you know, in the old school sense. And I really like that a lot. So other than a cumbersome and sometimes annoying combat system that kind of alternates between really fun and innovative and cumbersome, annoying, and not well designed in terms of going from normal fights to bosses, the game of the gameplay of Super Mario, or excuse me, Paper Mario Color Splash is really, really fun to do, and I definitely recommend this. And overall, I would say this is probably one of my favorite games on the Wii U. Um, that's currently out there. I really enjoyed playing through it. It was one of the freshest games I played this year. And I will at least say this, the definitely the story, or not, excuse me, not so much the story, but the writing really wowed me. The soundtrack really wowed me. The graphics really kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop. And the gameplay was at least fresh enough to carry me from start to finish, which is more than I can say than the wholesome platform experience of Super Paper Mario or a generic boring RPG. And that's one thing I like, that the, the dialogue kept the story fresh and the gameplay fresh, you know, from start to finish. So I would say that this game is exactly how long it needs to be. Maybe one or two levels could have been extended a bit, but otherwise this game is exactly as long as it needs to be. Only maybe one or two really annoying and, and troublesome levels in the game, um, but otherwise a good experience from start to finish. So what would I give Paper Mario Color Splash? I'm going to give Paper Mario Color Splash an 84 out of 100. And the reason why is because, again, the soundtrack blew me away. Gold star, gold standard for soundtrack, in my opinion. The writing of the story, the story I more or less expected to hold true, so I really don't take off anything, nor do I add anything, but the writing and the dialogue really kept me on my toes, really was funny, and sometimes it was touching a little bit, and it was really felt like they knew not only the history of Mario, they didn't, know, they didn't just know what they wanted to do, they knew what they wanted to do, they knew the history of Mario, and they knew what the fans would want to see and read. So there's a lot of jokes and references in there, and I really like that when a game can do that. I really like, you know, parody games and stuff like that. And in other words, I really think that that was well done.
So ultimately, the only thing that really drags this down from being like a 90, 92, 94 is the gameplay. I feel that the, if the gameplay were refined, were uh, a bit more RPG-esque with, you know, leveling system and stats and everything along those lines, I think it could really be something. I think that they really have something going. But ultimately, I have to give it an 84 because the gameplay does detract from the overall fun. The sometimes annoyingly punishing difficulty sometimes does take away from those moments that are really fun and really interesting. And once you get into the swing of things, it's not so bad, but it is always going to be a part of this game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of is what detracts from it, in my opinion. So thank you for listening to this. I think that it's still a very, very good game, a very, very strong push, strong contender. And I will see you next time on The Verdict. Um, yeah, have a good one.